Hey guys, welcome to Spax Attack. How we doing, traders? How we doing? Welcome, welcome to the SPACs Attack, where we talk everything SPACs. And if you're enjoying us, smash the like. You know, one thing we wanted to do is not leave you guys out. So we did a recorded show. Uh, I'll let you guys know right now is uh, 3.42 Eastern. So just to give you guys a, a, an idea of where we were going to be at on the charts and kind of what was going on in the market during that time. So there's a couple of things that kind of slightly just happened and, and Chris and I are going to let you guys know a little bit of our new positions. So definitely stay tuned, guys. This is going to be a great show regardless if it's live or not. So smash the like button for us. Let us know in the comments if you like any of our picks, don't like any of our picks we we don't mind at the end of the day just state the debate right state why you don't like it state why you like it and in both ways we'll definitely take a look all right chris so how you doing man doing great doing great you know it's a little weird to not be interacting with our our raving fans in that live chat but hopefully everyone is enjoying this recorded video um you know that we got out to you guys you know after market close for a change so you can go back look at this and you know get some new ideas towards tomorrow yeah definitely you know w one of the things is you know we don't stop here and, and we're not going to quit for you guys we're going to keep working hard i know chris and i have been building on our portfolios so we want to let you know a little bit about what's going on today so let's let's jump right into some of the headlines of today all right guys yeah so diving into headlines today up first we have GIX. So this is Gig Capital 2. Uh, they are pushing to change their uh, vote date from March 10th to June 10th. Um, so an extension going through on that vote date. So keep an eye out on that one. Then we have NGA. So NGA, one of the, actually the positive SPAC trades today in the green. So they, of course, are bringing Lion Electric public. I do own a position in NGA. So the news out today was that they secured an order for an all-electric school bus uh, from the Los Angeles School District. So, you know, this is the largest school district in the state of California, covering over 600,000 students, grades K through 12. That initial order is for 10 Lion C electric school buses. Uh, you know, the second largest school district in the U.S., so I'm curious to see you know, if this leads to more orders as the press release really just calls it an initial order, but doesn't break down, um, you know, what kind of extensions we could be looking at. So this is the electric bus that has a 155 mile range on a single charge. These buses are expected to be delivered in spring of 2021. That deal announcement today follows up the news that we got yesterday from Proterra. So Proterra merging with Arclight, uh, ACTC, they got a, a deal for 1,400 school buses over the next 12 years with uh, a county in Maryland near Washington, D.C. Uh, so again, you know, two big electric school bus contracts signed. This follows up with President Biden talking about converting 500,000 school buses in the U.S. to zero emission by the year 2030. So to me, these two deals, you know, big positive for both these companies and maybe, you know, laying the groundwork of what needs to happen here in the U.S. So keep an eye on ACTC and NGA. And then sports betting. So just announced today that in Florida, um, they're proposing legalizing sports betting. So that was filed and is heading to the House in the upcoming session. Uh, so keep an eye out on the usual suspects in sports betting. Of course, in the SPAC world, we have DKNG, GNOG, RSI, and DMYD, you know, all being SPACs attached to that sports betting market. They're all ones that we've covered on the show, um, you know, but definitely looking at these, you know, especially on today's pullback. Then yeah, we have you know, 
one, one thing ahead, to keep man. in mind, I just want to add this kind of information is that DKNG actually has earnings tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, you know, r right before the bell. So it's going to be interesting to watch this one. Also, you know, it has this support, but also the earnings I think are going to take over. And it could be the overall market because even with the good news today, we saw that turnaround on, on DKNG. So we'll keep it in mind. But yeah, earnings tomorrow confirmed, guys, before the, er before the market opens. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting for sure. Yeah, and we'll we'll definitely be talking about uh, DraftKings then tomorrow. Maybe look at a couple of these sports betting spacs on tomorrow's show. Uh, so up next we have Fisker. So FSR big mover yesterday. Um, you know on that deal signed with Foxconn shares did start trading higher earlier. Um, have fallen since with the market, but Henrik Fisker, CEO, he's going to be on Mad Money tonight. He's been on the show before. Kramer's a big fan of Fisker. Sometimes we get that pop. Um, who knows what's going to happen with the way the market is going today, but definitely keep an eye on Fisker. And disclosure, I do own shares of FSR. Our merger, Man, go ahead. Before you get away from that one, that was one of my story stocks, and, and I actually got stopped out of this one. So you guys can blame me and, and let me know I was a little bit of a, a pansy in this one, for especially for what I got stopped out on. I should have listened to my original risk, and that's why you sometimes stick with your original plan. You know, I changed my plan, and that's what happened to me on, and on FSR. But still, still a story stock for the year. You know, uh, you know that didn't change my opinion in it. And, and you got the support is what it would needed. You know, the best part about this chart was that sideways period. I mean, how many times did you get a chance to get this one at 15, you know, and then maybe risk down towards the 14? That was my original thought. Um, I had gotten in this one at around 15, 12, and I was going to risk down towards about 14, 12. And if I would have done that, I would still be in it today and probably selling into the, the breakout rip through the 24s. Um, but hey, what a great chart, good catalyst. Look at the volume build. Remember, we always talk about what needs us to get out of this, uh, consolidation is that volume push. And you got that 70 million volume. And then yesterday, 87 million. So definitely great move there for by Fisker. All right. And then we have SBE. Uh, that merger with ChargePoint was approved. Remember, this was the second attempt as they didn't get enough votes on the first one. I do own shares of SBE. Those will start trading as CHPT um, within a couple days. So again, charging infrastructure play uh, for the new administration and the growth of electric vehicles. We did have one rumor out um, overnight. So MLAC, that's Malacca Straits. They're in talks to merge with Vision Plus, which is a streaming company out of Indonesia. So it's been referred to as the Netflix of Indonesia. They have 1.6 million paid subscribers. Uh, Bloomberg's reporting this is a $600 million valuation being assigned. Uh, so share shot up this morning. Um, I saw around $14 on that rumor. Um, you know, of course, with the, uh, the, the overall market, we are now down to 1028. So, you know, if this was one that you were watching, you believe in the management team or you like the growth of Indonesia there, uh, definitely have a, a buying opportunity now on this uh, pushback uh, with a attached rumor from a reliable source with Bloomberg. So that's one that's on my watch list um, for today and tomorrow. Big movers yesterday, Fisker, we'd already talked about up 39% on that partnership news. And then we did have the four deals announced yesterday, uh, AONE up 21%, RAAC up 19%, RTP up 4%, and RMGB up 5%. Disclosure, I do own R -R 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 -A -A -C, RTP, and RMGB. Um, so this was a unique day because we actually saw all four trade positive, um, which we haven't seen for a while on these days when we've had multiple SPAC deals announced. Typically when there's ones that have these rumors already built into the share price, we've seen a couple of them, you know, trade negative or flat on the day. So, you know, again, overall market down today, but yesterday definitely looks like there was some strength there. Um, with these SPAC deals seeing at least, uh, you know, almost a 5% gain across the board from those four. 
Um, and then speaking of AONE, so that is the one we didn't cover in detail yesterday. I want to dive into this one a little bit. So um, shares did spike in the after hours market as well as it was announced that ARC Funds, led by Kathy Woods, took an initial position in AONE. So this is an additive manufacturing 3D printing company, enterprise value of $1.66 billion. Um, that pipe included Microsoft Corporation, uh, you know, definitely a strong player there. So they target industries, you know, across the board. We've got aerospace, military, defense, space exploration, healthcare, medical, automotive, and industrial uh, they replace plastic, steel, and aluminum end-use parts with easy-to-print metals. Uh, so they have three business lines with software, printers, and materials. The thing that really stood out to me was this customer base for Mark Forge. Uh, so you have Bosch, Schneider Electric, Airbus, Lockheed Martin, General Electric, the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, NASA, Blue Origin, SpaceX, Medtronic, Gillette. Uh, Bayer, Regeneron, Porsche, Honda, Tesla, Toyota, General Motors, and Ford Motor Company. That is a huge list of customers, you know, doing this 3D printing for. So revenue last year was $70 million. They're projecting to hit $88 million for fiscal 2021 and $122 million for fiscal 2022. Uh, compound annual growth rate of 68% over the next five years. So they compete with desktop metal, you know, which also went public in a SPAC. Uh, so in that investor presentation, you know, they compare themselves to desktop metal, saying that that company only had revenue of 15 to 20 million last year versus the 70 million that Mark Forged had. And desktop metal's market cap is over $5 billion compared to a pro forma equity valuation of $2 billion for Mark Forged. That, of course, was based on a share price of $10. You know, AONE is the one of the four that I did not own from yesterday's deal announcements. And it is the one, you know, looking at the the presentation, you know, it really stands out. And, you know, I think ARC Funds taking a stake is definitely a positive sign here. Um, you know, so keep an eye out on AONE on some pullbacks here. And then turning past headlines, uh, we turn to our calendar. So, you know, as Mitch talked about DraftKings, we have DraftKings earnings tomorrow. But before tomorrow, by the time you're watching this show, you may have seen several former SPACs report earnings. We have Velodyne, VLDR, we have Fisker, FSR, and we have Virgin Galactic, SPCE, all reporting in about six minutes by my calculations. But again, this is pre-recorded. So go back, check out those earnings, see uh, you know what's going on with these former SPACs. So that's what I've got, Mitch. Just wanted to get those earnings up there so definitely got them up now so one of the things that i want to tell you guys about these earnings is who knows maybe we'll take a look live if they come out live for us while, while we're recording it we'll take a look and, and maybe just tell you a little bit about them but we we do got a good show for you guys we got uh actually you know chris since this is since this was your article well can you at least let us know what we're going to get into yeah, so, you know, we're going to look at our watch list, talk about some purchases, but then the thing we want to get into was uh, one of our favorite shows and top viewed shows was one we did at the end of last year, where we kind of talked about some top SPAC picks for 2021. So I broke it down with 10 picks. Four of them were still searching for a target. Four of them had already landed a target pre-merger. And then two are former SPACs. So we kind of hit across the different uh, sectors of the SPAC timeline. So we're going to tell you how each of those 10 performed. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story and what could be next. And Mitch is going to walk you through that chart. And we'll take a look at how those 10 performed versus, you know, the S&P 500, that SPY ETF. Perfect, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and, and let's get into some maybe some watch list action. What we're going to do is can actually we're going to talk a little bit about some of the positions that we opened up today. I'm not getting too much of the watch list. I'm sure you guys are looking at it. It's going to look a little bit red, but when the red comes, that's when SPACs go on sale, man. Sometimes left alone in the 
Hey, just like the song says, in the heat of the night, man, in the heat of the night, but this was the heat in the market, the heat in the market. And so one of the things that Chris and I have been trying to do is keep, you know, keep building on our portfolios. One thing I I started, guys, is that I had some SPACs before, but it was kind of more like I, I nitpicked one or two. And now I've really been building a portfolio in, in 2021. So we'll, we'll, we'll let you know a little bit about some of the things that we added to and, and some of the pos initial positions that we took. I'm going to go into some of mine first. And so uh, I'll first bring up, you know, of course, uh, I, I went and I, and I took an ad on SPNV. You know, it, it really wasn't bad ads, at least in my eyes. Uh, I'll, I'll put this on a one minute so you guys can at least see what I kind of did here. Um, right at the open, I actually sold a little bit right at the open here just to get a little bit off of my, my share plate. You know, it got some out. Um, and, and then when it dipped down, I actually was able to add here near 11, got some there. And then really, really where it was nice, it was getting an ad down here. I even got filled at, at kind of this 1070 area, giving me a, a, a significant nice entry um I'm, I'm not too mad now i'm sitting at an 11 average so won't be too mad about this position this is really my hype stock i think you know when this one announces i'm i'm hoping for a good acquisition here so we'll, we'll see what happens there all right let's keep going here let's go into another one that we'll talk a little bit, a little bit later so i won't get into too much depth here but btaq i, I feel like i got a great entry on this one today um, you know, I, I was able to get a fill here at 1030. I can't be mad about that. You know, when, when you look at it, you know, 1030s, 1035s, that's, that's, good. that's where I like to get in, guys, because at least it gives me a, a potential, you know, nice risk and return here. Got the, all this pullback and, and kind of profit area that I can start looking at for some profit. The next one up here, guys. Uh, so LFTR. I know a lot of people have been talking about this one. So many people have been talking about this one that they got me into it today, guys. So I actually got in today um, near this 1050. So I got in at 1050 on a dip buy just based off the chart. You know, I drew this line out for me and, and I saw the line near this 1048. So I went off the support, could kind of clearly see this kind of action here. And that's what I went off of, and I'm not going to be upset, you know, uh, going off of some support here and at least giving me a, a potential nice dip buy near this 1050 area. So won't be mad about that one. That's LFTR. ETAC, the next one up, Emerge Technology. To me, really what stood out in this company and, and a lot of it had to do with, you know, the name, I think. You know they're, they're going to go after something that that has some some good connections here one of the things that i did was i got in this one pretty cheap here 10 10 20s you know this one's actually you know com come from a, a low of 960s so maybe this one gets a little bit closer towards 10 again and maybe i can get an ad towards 10 or, 10 or 990s but at least the risk becomes very limited there and so we're, we're talking about 60 cent risk there but a potential i'll be looking for at least you know three or four bucks on the upside we're talking 14 15 16 for the upside there all right so i don't want to go too far into there and take up too much of the day you know one of the things that i tried to do was really just put some far out limit orders and that's how i got filled today guys and one of the things that i recommend for you guys to do is not necessarily to just attack into it and and go on the ask but necessarily look for a dip buy look for that 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 nice limit order and that's what i did guys it's it's you know at the end of the day it's what works for you but that's just what i did today guys i put some dip buys that i thought you know if we pull back towards these levels i'd be happy with my entry and so hey Today I was looking down and, and you could you could just see hear my phone just ding, ding, ding. I was like, all right, I guess I'm getting some fills here today. I'm not going to be upset because I'm, I'm the man with the plan. All right, Chris. So uh, now it's going to be your turn. Let, let's go ahead and let's go over what you added to or what kind of initial positions you took today. Yeah, so the, the big one I want to talk about, uh, Soaring Eagle acquisition, you know, SRNGU trading as units just went public yesterday. This is a $1.5 billion SPAC from Harry Sloan and Jeff Sagansky. 
They're in our SPAC Hall of Fame that we just talked about a couple days ago. Um, you know, this is the team that took DraftKings and Skills Public in the, the sports betting market. Uh, you know, they've got experience doing, you know, seven or eight SPAC deals over the last five years, even before SPACs became, you know, the hot thing that they are. So to me, this was a no brainer. Um, strong management team. You had shares trading under $11 for units. Those units include one fifth of a warrant. Um, to me, you know, the, the story here is in 52 days when they split into common shares and warrants, you're going to see strong interest from people who weren't able to buy in on the units as certain brokers don't allow that. And then you're also going to see this one's probably going to trade at a premium based on that management team and that past history, as we've seen with some of these, you know, SPAC Hall of Famers. So I took a, a pretty good size position in this one. So SRNGU. And then I also added to my position in uh, LFTR. So based on that management team, uh, the fintech focus, I think they go hard after a crypto company. So you have, you know, former people from E-Trade, uh, Coinbase, TD Ameritrade. So, you know, to me, you know, brokerage experience, crypto experience, you know, and today we have those shares. I mean, basically, you know, the lowest that we've seen in, in quite a while. So, I did take a starter position not too long ago, but I, I added a good size today as well. As I think this is one of the one of the good ones, and I've been trying to find some that I think target crypto. The, this is the play that I've got. All right, all right. Hey, like always, guys, you got. We'll let you guys know what we get into, and we try to be as transparent as we can be. And, and that's really what it's all about, guys. We're building up with you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into those top 10 SPAC picks of 2021. You know, one thing, we're going to run through them a little bit more quickly here so that you guys, you know, it's not so much about the charts on these, but more about the story. And that's kind of what I would pay attention to what Chris would mention. So I'll let him start running through these. And you guys pull out that pen and paper and smash that like. Yeah, guys. So, you know, again, we don't want to spend too much time on this. It is four o'clock now. So we do have some earnings. I've got some articles to write for all of you who enjoy, you know, content on Benzinga.com as well. Um, so we want to talk about those top 10 uh, SPAC picks that we singled out in December. So this is the starting price is based on January 4th, where shares open trading that first day of the new year. And then the, the ending price is based on 2.45 p.m. Eastern time today. And then we're going to talk about the return. So up first, we have RTP. So starting price, 11.75, now at 12.60, a return of 7.2%. I do own shares of RTP now. I did not at the start of the year. They announced that deal with Joby Aviation yesterday. This is a, a you know electric vertical takeoff and landing company. They have that partnership with Uber um, Technologies for the Uber Elevate. They're going to be able to be on the Uber app in the future. I think that's a huge catalyst. Um, I was a little surprised that ARC didn't initiate a position in this one yesterday, as she has with a couple of the other uh, EVTOL companies. Um, but I think eventually we see this one hit the ARC fund. So RTP um, you know, up 7.2% since the start of the year. And then our second pick, we have BTAQ. Uh, so started at 10.55, down to 10.42 now, down 1.2%. This was one, you know, Mitch talked about too, taking a position. So to me, love the management team. Former executives from HP and BlackBerry um, and SAP. I think they target Israeli technology based on their, you know, prospectus that mentioned Israel, you know, specifically. So to me, BTAQ, again, no target, but I still think it's a strong play the rest of the year. Um, they did dip a little bit when that REE Automotive was announced with a different company as that was seen as a possible target. But to me, there are so many great Israeli technology companies out there. So, you know, I still own BTAQ and, you know, I love that management team. And we have IPOF. So IPOF, of course, from Chamath Palihaptia. This is his biggest SPAC out there. So start of the year at 12.45. Now at 13.91, we are up 11.7%. I do own shares of IPOF. 
I think we get a you know a deal announced soon. Chamath has been busy with these pipe deals, um, but eventually I think the attention turns back you know to his own right. So IPOD and IPOF still out there without targets. Um, you know, so keep an eye out on this one. I think it's one of the the better ones. And if you can get it under under fourteen now on today's sell off, you know, I I'm a I'm a fan there of this one running over the next couple of weeks. And then the other one that didn't have a announced target that was a top pick was Ajax. So AJAX. This one started the year at eleven ninety nine, and we are at eleven ninety nine today. Um, you know, again, a uh, strong management team. I can't stress that enough. You have the founders of Square, Chipotle, uh, Instagram, 23andMe. So, you know, great management team. This one was trading at a really good premium. We have pulled back now with the overall market. So, you know, if you like that management team, you think they land a big deal like I do, um, I think under 12, you're, you're in a great spot here. And I do own shares of AJAX. And turning to our ones that announced deals. So we have DMYD. They announced a merger with Genius Sports. So started the year at 1740. We are now at 1818, up 4.5%. Um, so, you know, again, this, this is a good one. That sports betting market, the thing behind the thing. Um, you know, I big fan of this one and not surprised by the move. I actually think we go higher going into the merger vote and the increased number of states working on legislation uh, for sports betting. And then we have NGA. So NGA merging with Lion Electric. We talked about them at the start of the show today. It's actually up today. So started the year at 1980. Um, now we're at 20 point. Five three up three point seven percent. I do own shares of NGA again. Electric buses, electric vans, huge growth there with the new administration. We had the CEO on our show. You know, he talked about announcing that new factory and the U.S. expansion. Um, I'm a big fan of this story, and I, I think we continue to go higher. Then we have uh, what was LGVW now trading as BFLY, that's Butterfly Network, the portable ultrasound company. Started the year at 1965, we're now at 1979. We're up just under 1%. Um, this one you know, has pulled back quite a bit over the past couple of days with this sell-off. But you know, to me, again, Bill Gates backs it. Bailey Gifford backs it. Uh, I like the story here. Uh, I think it grows. And this was one that Kathy Wood has been loading up big on in the ARC funds as well. And we have SRAC merging with Momentus. This is a space play. Started the year at 1837. Now at 1784, we're down 3%. This is one that I own. Um, again, space story. They're going to be the last mile delivery company, the FedEx for the space market. Kathy Wood has a space ETF coming. I think this one gets added, but I think this one is going to get a lot of support. It's going to be, you know, an alternative play to Virgin Galactic. And since SpaceX isn't public, it, you know, there aren't a ton of peer play space companies out there. Momentous is going to be one. Just keep an eye out on that one, especially down on the year now. And then turning to our two that were former SPACs, uh, we have DM, Desktop Metals. So started the year at 1710. Now at 20.54, we're up 20.1%. Um, 3D printing, additive printing, it's, you know, new manufacturing methods, uh, 2.0. You know, as I talked about AONE at the start of the show, I, I think these 3D printing companies for industrial and manufacturing, it's a huge growth market. Uh, you know, as you try to cut costs, you'd be more productive. You can also print items for planes and cars that way less, which is going to help the overall, you know, cost structure um, and energy consumption. So keep an eye out on that one. And then the last pick was Fisker. FSR, we started the year at 1521. We're now at 21.65, up 42.3%. Um, again, talked about this one at the start. They have that new deal with Foxconn. And, you know, partnership with Magna, they're going to start making cars later the end of this year and the start of next year. I, I own shares of FSR. Uh, I think this is a good story stock, as Mitch said. 
you know, going forward, it's going to be a pure play electric vehicle, U.S. manufactured uh, company, similar to, you know, what, what Tesla has. They're going to keep bringing new models to market, and they already have that production with Magna, where they're going to be able to focus on the design and marketing side of things, not have to worry about production. Um, so I still own shares of this one. So if you were paying attention, our top 10 SPAC picks are up an average of 8.6% um, on the year so far, beating the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, which has a return of 2.3% so far on the year. So the, the theme you saw there was, you know, 10 picks across the different timeline. The two that are post SPAC merger actually performed the best so far. But I think it illustrates, especially with the day like today where we are red, it, you know, have some diversification across that SPAC timeline, have some diversification across different sectors, you know, to help balance out any possible uh, laggards there. So what do you think, Mitch? I think you couldn't have said it better, my friend. Uh, you gotta, you gotta diversify. If you're not diversifying in these, then it, it, it strictly becomes a gamble, and, and that's not what we're about, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, SPACs are supposed to be a smart investment for smart investors, and so don't take yourself out of the game by just, just loading the boat in one in, in one basket. And so, one thing I always say is, don't let one stock make you. And don't let one stock break you because on both sides, if you if you're always thinking about that one stock is gonna make you, one stock will make me. Then that's how you start loading the boat and you start playing this game. But it's both sides of the game. And don't let one break you, don't let one make you. And the last thing I gotta say is breaking news, breaking news today near the, the near the close. So Chris, we we, we, we got a, a little bit of movement in Lordstown. In full disclosure, you know, Chris and I just put out an order, probably filled uh, somewhere near here in the 1960s, 1950s area. Um, so uh, breaking news here, you know, uh, looks like they're trying to stop it. Looks like they try to stop it. You know, the House Democrats planning to attempt to stop the U.S. Postal Service contract with Okosh. What, what do you think about that, Chris? You know, first off, I think it's another great reason why you should subscribe to Benzinga Pro because that's where I saw this at. I mean, yeah. I'm on Twitter all day. I'm looking at different websites for article ideas. But at the end of the day, the place where I saw this news was Benzinga Pro, where Workhorse started making that move. Uh, Lordstown Motors started trading higher, you know, in sympathy to that. And then Oshkosh shares traded lower. So you had all three being covered there, you know, across by Benzinga Pro. I'm working on an article, you know, right after the show about it, you know, and Mitch and I both did put in orders on Lordstown Motors. That's ticker R-I-D-E. To me, that's the stronger play because Workhorse is a little bit more tied to this USPS contract, whereas you saw shares trade down over 50% when they didn't get it. I think if they don't get a piece of it, you're, you know, you're going to see a lower valuation there. Lordstown Motors, they were, you know, going to get a piece of maybe the manufacturing side of things, you know, to make those vehicles. But Lordstown Motors has that endurance electric pickup truck. They, they already have that line in place. They have that partnership with Camping World. So to me, RIDE on the dip, it was a good buying opportunity. And then to see the news come out today that maybe, you know, Workhorse ends up with part of the deal. I think it was worth putting in the, the buy purchase order there. Yeah, it's a pure speculative play, but there's nothing wrong with the risk and return, right? And in, in this case, we don't see too much risk because of the the ride down towards support. And then we see positive catalysts. So it, it's not a good, it's not a bad area to kind of start measuring an entry. So that's why Chris and I took the shot. I mean, what's the best thing that happens is tomorrow they say, hey, workhorse gets the contract ride would be up you know and and if they don't then i don't think a ride takes that big of a hit either because it's already on that support and the news had already been kind of baked in into workhorse so we did see a pop here on workhorse all the way from about 15 to 1950s i think a good side for us chris and just to kind of be you know transparent here i think i'll look to see if ride can really make it past that level of that high today it got to a 20 dollars so if we can pass 20 
you know, I'll be sitting tight and kind of holding on to my position. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for us today, guys, on SPAC's attack. As you guys see, Chris Chris is already busy working, man. That guy, that guy has a lot to do. So, hey, like always, guys, smash the like button. If you enjoy us working hard and, and keep building this SPAC game with you guys, definitely hit the like button. We'll continue working hard, guys. At the end of the day, we do this every single day, guys, at, at 11 to 12. But we wanted to give a show. Uh, on that late night on that prime time just to give you guys a little bit of information and so th thanks chris one more time guys hey we'll hit that like button chris appreciate you always being the brain smash for the show. that like smash that and, like and, we, and we like did always this show for you guys again the cannabis conference ran today cannabis conference runs again tomorrow so if you're watching this on thursday night tune into benzinga catch pre-market prep 8 a.m friday morning and then stay tuned right after that for the cannabis conference. You're going to hear from executives from publicly traded cannabis companies. You know, we'll talk about a growing segment with the new administration possibly. But yeah, I, I got articles to do. We're in earnings season. We got so many earnings out today. And, you know, so go ahead and uh, check out my Twitter or Benzinga and find some of those articles that I worked on too. So thanks, everyone. And don't forget, just because we're not live, smash the like. Oh,